Hey y'all, this is Stephen Van Camp and Lewis on August 7th, 2021, and temperatures here in Texas have sort of returned to normal. Should be close to 100 degrees today, tomorrow, and into the foreseeable future. So uh, it looks like our nice, cool, rainy summer is over, and we're getting back into the to the normal temperature regime, which is fine with me um, because I grow everything assuming it's going to be 100 degrees. So uh, rainy and cool is not great for my setup because I haven't been expecting it. Uh, that said, uh, last week I said, hey everybody, there's not a whole lot typically blooming this time of year. Obviously the one thing that I have in bloom um, is right behind me just so you all can can check it out. I'll make a video about it soon enough. So I said, hey, if you have culture ideas or care ideas or stuff that you want to know more about, let me know and I will make a video about it. So uh, Nicole, Deanna, and uh, Ronald Gronink both said, hey, I have a tough time growing Sicknikes. Uh, can you do a, a video about that particular group? And so that's what today's discussion is about. Uh, Sicknikes some of their background, some of the species, some of the cooler hybrids that I really like. And then um, we'll talk about care towards the end, I guess, or at least care that's different from how you grow catacetums and why they die, why Sicknikes seem to die at the drop of a hat. So first of all, uh, Sicknikes have a similar range to catacetums and they're, they're close relatives, of course. Um, uh, Sicknikes range from Mexico all the way through Central and South America. They generally occur in fairly hot lowland areas. Um, they like steamy conditions, warm days, warm nights, fairly bright light, um, and they're, they're growing typically on dead and rotting wood which is different than catacetums, which are typically growing on live trees. Uh, and that difference is important. It, it may account for why uh, they're a little more difficult to grow and they, they will die at the drop of a hat. So when you're growing on rotting wood, your media in the wild is, is expendable. It's, it's got a very limited time frame, especially in these hot steamy areas where these guys are from. So they have to grow fast and die young. As such, as they're growing, what they do is they typically put up a bulb and then, a, you know, and then another bulb and that back bulb dies. So it's, it's really uncommon to see a Sicknikes with more than a new growth plus last year's bulb. Uh, so if you're able to keep your Sicknikes happy and under good conditions, uh, it's rare, but you can actually get uh, your Cigna keys to have, you know, several years of back growth. But even then, that's not uh, that's not the norm. It, so, so that's that's sort of the first thing to think about as you're growing them. You know, if that back bulb starts to turn yellow or orange and go away during the winter time, that's okay. That's just the plant absorbing those nutrients and, and sending them. Uh, uh, keeping the plant alive during dormancy. Now, if that happens during the growing season, something's probably not right. And if that happens and your bulb is black and smelly, that's rot, which is different than uh, your bulb being absorbed by the plant. So that said, that's a little bit of the cultural advice. And, and we'll, like I said, we'll talk a little bit more about cultural stuff, but I want you to keep that in the back of your mind as you're thinking about growing your Sicknikes and what went wrong for you in previous years. So, Cigna Keys uh, have very interesting looking flowers. Uh, there's, there's a couple of different sections in the Cigna Keys. So, Cigna Keys are divided into two sections. Uh, one is called U Cigna Keys, and the other is called uh, Heteranthi. So, the U Cigna Keys, so I'm not gonna go through all, there's like 34-ish species, so I'm not gonna go through all of them. I'll talk a little bit about my favorites and sort of divide them into the two sections. Uh, section U, Cigna Keys, has the sort of smaller, more swan-like orchids, uh, flowers, male flowers. Uh, of course, uh, Cigna Keys have male and female flowers. But these are, are your species like Cooperi, Heron Husseinum, 
um, Bartiorum and some of those other ones. They're sort of, uh, they have these long pendant uh, inflorescences with a lot of flowers all the way down. Whereas, uh, oh, and, and the males and the females in the section U Cycnikes look very different from one another. Uh, section Heteranthi has sort of large, typically hand-sized flowers that are, are green. And the male and the female flowers look fairly similar, uh, except for a difference in the column. So the male flowers have this, this long, thin column that kind of comes out and arches, whereas the females have sort of a, a snub beak. But the rest of the flower in section U, U excuse me, Heteranthes, uh, they look fairly similar. So in that group, it might actually make sense to try and have female flowers since the female flowers last so much longer than the male flowers. Uh, in section U Cycnikes, the male flowers last a week or two tops, um, but, but a week is typical. So my favorite flowers in section U Cycnikes, uh, or my favorite species I should say, are, are Bartiorum, which has a, a, a small sort of circular flower with uh, a lot of pink in the background and then a lot of dots. And uh, it's, it's such a great species and, and they're really hard to find these days. So if you can find species Cycnikes, even Fred Clark doesn't sell a lot of them. So when he does, or someone else does, snap them up because they're pretty rare. Uh, Cycnikes cooperi is a really cool one uh, and it can have really dark, dark bronze flowers. It can also have very green male flowers and, and there's sort of a whole uh, swath of shades in between both of those. Uh, both of which are beautiful and I really recommend grabbing for your collection if you can. Another favorite of mine is Cycnikes Heron Husseinum, which has these uh, really interesting looking yellow flowers. They're, they're kind of small. They've got sort of a, a, an orange gold quality to them and the tips of the petals actually reflex back, um, but in a very attractive way. You know, when, when you typically say your, your petals are reflexed, it's often kind of a, a, a not desirable trait, but for whatever reason, uh, Heron Husseinum really does a great job of, of making that really attractive and then having this nice shingling of the flowers in a nice long inflorescence. Uh, for section Heteranthi, uh, my two favorites, of course, are Varsavixii. And Varsavixii, again, is like a hand-sized flower with big, uh, big round petals and sepals. Uh, that roundness actually comes a lot from from Fred Clark's breeding and, and he actually has uh, an interesting article a couple years ago where he talks just about that species in AOS magazine and uh, he, he goes through his breeding over the past you know it's probably close to 20 years at this point where he started with these sort of wild shape uh, flowers and then he's just gotten them into this big round beautiful circular flowers that that he sells now another favorite of mine that I actually haven't grown, I would love to, is, is Cycnikes chlorochylon. Um, it's similar to Varsavixii, except that its, it's um, petals and sepals tend to be more down and upswept. So Varsavixii is sort of round and bubbly. Uh, chlorochylon has these, these uh, sort of downswept petals, and, and unfortunately a lot of time when you purchase a chlorochylon, it's actually not chlorochylon, it's either Varsavixii or a hybrid between the two species called mass confusion. Uh, both species are so similar looking that when they cross them, they created mass confusion. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. Now, my favorite uh, Cycnikes hybrids are, are the primaries. And I was picking Fred Clark's brain a few years ago, the last time he visited Houston, actually. Uh, we, were, we were driving uh, to the, the, the lecture series that he was, he was hosting. And I, I asked him, I was like, hey, can you start making these primaries again? I absolutely love them. And he said, no, unfortunately not. I'm sort of moving on to, 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 to different hybrids, which makes sense. You know, he's, he's a breeder. He wants to sell plants and selling plants includes, you know, breeding new stuff, which people grab immediately. And, uh, and so going back to this, those old primaries, which Sort of the foundation that a lot of his breeding program, I guess, isn't isn't a priority, and I understand that. But I'm still on the look for them, and check out some of these photos, and you'll see why I really want to get growing them again. You know, when I started growing Cycnikes back in the day, um, close to close to 15 years ago, 
uh, basically, you know, you got a few of the species, the, actually the species that I mentioned, Bartiorum, Cooperi, Heron Husseinum, that was pretty much it. Um, and, and then there was a hybrid called Jean E. Monier, which is Bartiorum by Cooperi. Um, both Bartiorum and Cooperi are fairly variable, so Jean E. Monier was also fairly variable. Um, and it is such a great species, or excuse me, primary hybrid. And it is the foundation for so, so many of, of the current Cycnikes hybrids. Uh, easy to grow, easier than the, the species to grow. Um, and, and I wish I could find it again, the, the really nice ones. It would be great to have some line, line bred versions of Jean E. Monier. Another great one that I love is William Clark, which is Heron Husseinum by Coopery. Um, and you can see the photos here, just really intense colors and Again, a little easier to grow than, than the species. Finally, one of my all-time favorites is Martha Clark, which is Heron Husseinum by Bartiorum. And it's this sort of, this really nice mixture of the pinks and the, um, the gold come together in a really, a really amazing way. And again, I, I wish I could find this one. Finally, uh, care for this group. You know, as I mentioned earlier, they, they, they live fast and die young. So they're kind of looking for a reason to die on you. So you're going to grow these fairly similarly to growing catacetums in that you are going to have a marked dry season and a marked wet season. Uh, these guys will really, really try and die on you in the winter time. Keep those roots dry, 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 dry. Um, you know, there's some exceptions to be made for catacetums. Uh, you don't want to start messing around and, and testing the, the, the exceptions. You really want to keep the roots dry, and you don't want to mess around with those exceptions for the Cycnikes, again, because they will rot at the drop of a hat. They really want warmer nights um, in, in wintertime than the Catacetums can handle. Uh, I would really not test the sort of tried-and-true method of having a wet summer and then a dry winter for this group. You know, that said, them growing in wood, rotting wood, means that they're going to want wet roots all summer long in the hottest part of your growing area. And so growing in the, the PET method with um, cypress mulch on top, which is, is how I grow, uh, really, really, really is amenable to this group. Uh, I couldn't find my other Cycnikes, but this is Cycnikes cooperi, and again, you know, this is a growth from two years ago, this growth is from last year, and this growth is from this year, so you can see the progression, and you can also see what happens with the old bulbs when they shrivel up and die. You just yank them off and toss them. This is Cycnikes egertonianum red. I got it from Floralia about a month or two ago. I have left it outside and I've not been giving it a dry rest uh, because it is so incredibly hot and humid this summer. I felt that giving this one a wet summer in our heat and humidity right now would help to bring it into the North American seasonal pattern a little more quickly and hopefully that wet that wet combined with the heat and humidity would, would spark a new growth earlier than uh, if I had given it a dry rest and allowed it to wake up in the fall, which is when it would want to do so. Uh, it's worked. This little guy has a new growth that's popping out here, and that's perfect because that will give me until about the, the middle of November, which is when my, my outdoor growing season here in Texas sort of ends. That'll give me enough time to get a really good solid growth on this before it goes dormant, hopefully in December. And then it will ideally switch over to a spring growth cycle that, that more matches our seasonal variations rather than the South American style where the seasons are reversed compared to what we have here in the Northern Hemisphere. So that's the quick and dirty update on Cycnikes, a little bit of their background, some photos, some care tips. Let me know if you have questions in the comment section and I'll get back to you. As always, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Subscribe and 
Again, that helps the channel, and I'll see you next weekend. Bye.